Hello, I'm Kastutis Mickey, and I'm a genetic counselor at the Colorado Fetal Care Center. I specialize in prenatal genetics and working with families to understand the genetic basis that explains anomalies identified on prenatal imaging. I'm here today to provide an overview of genetic screening opportunities for fetal aneuploidy. Screening for common aneuploidies in pregnancy, such as Down syndrome and trisomy 18, have been a mainstay in the prenatal field for many years now. Screening for these types of genetic disorders allows our patients and families to feel more empowered in preparing for the birth of a child or making decisions in how they would like to continue a pregnancy. Traditional screens, such as maternal serum screening, have been widely used, but are becoming increasingly replaced by non-invasive prenatal screening, or NIPS, also known as cell-free DNA screening, or CFDNA. Cell-free DNA is used to determine if a woman is at an increased risk to have a pregnancy with trisomy 21, or Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, or changes in the number of sex chromosomes, including Turner syndrome or Klinefelter syndrome. Cell-free DNA analyzes fragments of placental DNA to determine the risk for aneuploidy. Cell-free DNA originates from cytotrophoblastic cells undergoing apoptosis. These cells release fragments of placental DNA as the cells are being degraded. This DNA is released into the maternal bloodstream where it joins other maternal DNA fragments from maternal cells that have apoptosed. Thus, a blood draw during pregnancy will contain cell-free DNA from both the placenta and the mother. The DNA fragments in the maternal blood sample are isolated in the plasma and amplified before being aligned to the chromosome of origin. Labs have slightly different algorithms to quantify the amount of DNA present for each chromosome, but ultimately use the information from alignment to assess whether or not there is an excess or deficiency for any particular chromosome. This information is reported as a screen positive or a screen negative for the condition it tests for. The ability of the screen to detect certain aneuploidies varies depending on the condition. A 2018 meta-analysis stated that the detection rate was 97% for trisomy 21, 93% for trisomy 18, and 95% for trisomy 13. Individual labs may present slightly different numbers based on information collected from their own internalized data. It is important to remember that cell-free DNA is a screen and not diagnostic. Cell-free DNA does not provide a yes or no answer as to whether or not the condition is present, but rather demonstrates if a patient is at an increased or decreased risk for the condition tested. A screen positive indicates that a pregnancy is at an increased risk for the condition. As this is a screen, there is a chance for a false positive, and thus the positive predictive value, or PPV, should be reviewed with the patient. The positive predictive value is the chance that the positive result is actually positive. This percentage should be present on the final report and does vary from person to person. PPV is highly influenced by the incidence of the condition in the population. Thus, the more frequent a condition is, the more likely a positive is a true positive. Knowing that the risk for aneuploidy increases with maternal age, the positive predictive value for cell-free DNA increases with maternal age. Ultimately, a patient with a positive screen should be offered prenatal diagnostic testing via CVS, amniocentesis, or a postnatal karyotype on a whole blood sample. On the other hand, while a negative screen is certainly reassuring, there is always a small chance for a false negative. Additionally, the cell-free DNA screen does not provide information about all 23 pairs of chromosomes. The common aneuploidies only account for one-third of the chromosomal abnormalities that can be identified with diagnostic testing such as a karyotype or a microarray. Cell-free DNA misses a large proportion of possible disorders. There are more recently developed cell-free DNA screens which include the ability to analyze the entire genome or screen for de novo variants in a handful of single gene disorders. These screens should be used with caution as there are a number of limitations, including small study sizes, low detection rates for deletions and duplications, and very high false positive rates given the low positive predictive value for these screens. There is variance in recommendations for offering cell-free DNA to women. For example, the American College of Medical Genetics recommends cell-free DNA as a first-tier screen, while ACOG does not but rather encourages practices to explore all screening options and select a method that works best for their practice and their patient population. 
Overall, the key points that providers should discuss with families during pre-test counseling include genetic screening and testing in a pregnancy is optional and not a requirement. Cell-free DNA is a screen and not diagnostic. It is recommended that all positive screens are followed up by a diagnostic test either prenatally or postnatally. Cell-free DNA has limitations and does not screen for all genetic conditions. The clinical features of the syndromes on the screen should be reviewed with the patient. Additionally, the positive predictive value should also be explained to the patient. Patients with positive and other unusual screening results should be referred to a genetic counselor for interpretation of results and discussion of additional testing options. For more information, feel free to contact us at the Colorado Fetal Care Center. Thank you.